today. So before I waffle anymore, I'm gonna move the dog out of the way. Oh, you gonna slide that way. Go that way, so I can move along. There she goes. Wee! <laughs> Out of shot. Right, behave. Um, and I'm gonna turn you around and we're gonna have a play. Right, I'm keeping you in the case today because I did a really gorgeous workshop with some junior doctors. I probably told you about that already, haven't I? But on um, on Saturday, and as I moved the camera into the tripod, it very, very, like literally two seconds into dialing the emergency number on my phone. And the irony of that um, wasn't missed by me and all them. Um, <laughs> so, right, I think I think that works. So you can see the outline. Hopefully, you've all got the outline drawn on your um, watercolor paper or your cartridge paper. So we're all ready to go. Um, I did quite a bit of detail in this one and it's obviously up to you whether you leave those pencil lines in or whether you rub them out afterwards. Um, but I just wanted to give you a guide so you can see where those stripes are, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to stay within those lines and you can do your own stripes because every stripe, every zebra has a different stripe. It's like their fingerprint. Um, and that's about the only zebra fact I have for you today, I'm afraid. I was going to print off some facts and then I got distracted. Okay, so what we're going to do first, using the biggest brush you've got. So have a look through your kit and see which, which size brush you can find. I'm going to use, well it's not my biggest, but I'm going to use a size 8 today. Um, and what I want to do first, I want you to look really closely at the photograph. And like I said about those other colours, can you see across this area here in the picture, you've got quite a bit of warmth in those white areas. There's also... Um, I see some purple down this side here and I see some more warmth and sort of oranges. So what we're going to do first is we're going to lay down some washes. Don't go too wet. I'll, I'll show you how wet we, they need to be because otherwise we're going to be waiting for it to dry for too long before we can get our stripes on and any of the other details. Um, but really, really subtle. So very watery, watered down paint, pigment. Um, but we're not going to we're not going to be making massive pools of water like we've done before. So um, just a bit more control. Let me just check that you can see everything that I can see. So what I'm going to start with first is mixing up. Now this is a bit of a muddy palette I've got here, but this is a pink and a blue to make a really pale purple. You've got a handy, handy tip is to have a sheet of paper next to you so you can just test that colour out um, and see if you're happy with it. So that's going to be the first wash colour we put down is a, is a very, very, very pale purpley grey colour, so made from pink and blue. And what I'm going to do is look at the photograph. I'm just going to wash down just that little area there. And then I'm going to pop some of that up in his ear, on that inside of the ear, leaving any of those other areas white, because that's the white of the paper. And then I'm going to do the same on this part of the ear here. I'm going to drop in a patch there. Really squinting at your picture and see any other areas where you think that that grey, purpley grey, would sit quite nicely. So it's that it's putting almost putting the shadows in first. So going over your white and your black stripes, just looking at where those shadows sit around the structure of the horse's face. So you see that lovely muscle there. We need to get a bit of that purple shade just in there and a little bit here. So it's still wet but it's not dripping with water and it's still nice and loose so you can I wonder how subtle that is actually coming out. You can see it. And then I want you to do the same with a nice sunny but very diluted yellow. So behind the ear, coming down, blending it out with just water, just down this side of his neck. 
leaving that white bit in the middle. So if you, if you kind of look at the picture, it's going to be very much down to how we model this. It's going to be where we put these tonal values. So we've got that warmth there, some warmth here. Definitely a sunny patch on that part of the neck. I'm going to pop in another little bit of sunshine here. And so these are like your little under washes, just that are going to lay underneath when we start laying all the stripes down so that you've added some colour underneath. Otherwise, if you then to put them on afterwards, once you put your black stripes on, um, it's all going to bleed and, and go very muddy. So just looking where any of the sunlight, like I said, top of that ear, a bit of sunshine up there. Top of this ear. And I'm going to bring some sunshine down into his muzzle. You okay? I'm going to have some sip of my tea and slow down a little bit for you. What's the matter, dog? Dog? Do you want to get down? Come on. And then, don't laugh, okay? But we're going to put some pink in, just because I, d I really think it's going to brighten him up. And you know, it's not going to be a rainbow. It's not going to be a rainbow zebra, but I just think a little bit of colour in it is going to um, it's going to be lovely. So just on that edge here, where you've put that pink, where well, you put that yellow. Again, looking in those warm spots, like the little hot spots. I'm going to put some pink on the muzzle. And I'm just going to drop some up here. And under his eye, I think. Okay, everyone all right? Now I'm going to do the same with a blue, with a really lovely, fresh, bright blue. So sort of layer, we are, we are, we are layering up some, some tones without sort of realising we're doing it. So then, then dropping in some blue here, some blue again under that shadow, just over that purple. in the ear and then when you've got these white um hair fur what's it called <laughs> this is mane isn't it so when you've got the tops of the white there i'm just going to put some um some of the blue up here where the where the um the white hair is going to blend in with the black hair just at the top there <clears throat> Oh. I think I disappeared. I think my data ran out. Come back, come back. Am I back? I think my data ran out and um I've just put you back on the Wi Fi now, so I'm really hoping you don't um disappear again because the Wi Fi is um Okay, what can I do? What can I do to improve the Wi-Fi? Get all the boys off their computers. Let me turn the Wi-Fi on this off on this one. That might help. I thought I had enough data. Okay, I'm really hoping you're still there. Yep. 
Yeah, still there. Okay, I'll carry on. <laughs> you might have to shout really loudly because I, oh dear, we'll have to keep standing up and seeing if you're still there on the um, on the phone. Sorry about this. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to get some colour on this eye. And like we've done before, we're going to put some sunshine in the background in the eye. We're just going to put a tiny bit of a blue wash in there. So looking at the eye, I'm going to put a blue wash all around the bottom. Really, really subtle and then leaving a little white area that's going to be your reflection. And then have a look in your palette for a really lovely, rich, reddy brown. I know it's quite hard to see his eye in this picture, but um, I did just I did quickly check on Google what zebra's eyes look like. <laughs> they are definitely brown. And then what you want to do is to drop in the first brown wash, but leaving that little white area you're going to leave for your reflection. Now give that chance to dry just for a minute and let's go down. Oh, this is really tricky. I want to make sure you're still there. Keep calm and carry on. Yep. <laughs> It'll be fine. So leaving the eye to dry, that first wash to dry on the eye, I want you to mix up. Oh, I've got the wrong colour in my palette there. I thought that was something else. Um, a really, really dark brown we need, sort of purpley brown. Something like that. And then I'm just going to go in and start to put a first little wash down. In that darkest area there on the top of his nose. And then underneath the nostril. Inside the nostril. And then down and round. And his muzzle. I'm going to take all the paint off my brush and then just with water I'm going to let that blend so you get that lovely sort of fairy effect almost velvety and allow that to bleed out to nothing all the way around Still there, yeah. <laughs> and the same round his nostril. Leaving those little white edges if you can up there. Keep looking at your photographic reference to check where those dark areas stop. And with a really pale wash then, just scooping in and around that nostril to try and make that look 3D. So it needs to be darker on one side and lighter on the other. And then obviously you've got the dark shadow coming underneath the nostril there. Okay, so that's like the first wash on his, um, on his muzzle done. If you can blend up your, those edges a bit more, if you've left them in like I have. So going back to the eye now, because that first wash of brown should have died, dried back. Mixing up a really, really dark blue, nearly black. Go into the middle of his eye and draw the pupil in. Now it looks like their pupils are slightly like a squished egg shape when I did some research. So that's what I'm going to do for him. And then I'm going to draw the black in. 
in that darkest area there. Just framing the eye and then taking all the paint off your brush. And just with water, blending that in to the brown. And then what I like to do is get a bit of tissue and I just take out some of that colour just to make it not quite so intense. Popping a bit more brown in mine because I went very black then. Okay, everyone all right? While I've got a bit of um, that really rich, dark colour on my brush, I'm just going to drop in that darkest corner of his nostril there just to give that a bit of depth. And a few little areas around here. While it's still wet and it will still bleed in, and you get that nice texture. And can you see where you put that pink wash in before and that little orange wash because we're using a really diluted solution of the paint those washes are showing through it just gives it a bit more depth I'm just going to quickly put a little bit of blue around his eye while I'm here, otherwise I might forget to do that. So just a little subtle blue wash. It's a bit like 80s eyeliner, doesn't it? But just, just freshen it up a bit. There we go. Right, let's have some fun with these stripes then. Are you ready? So what we're looking for, and we will take a bit of time to get the right colour really, um, is a sort of a pur really dark purpley blue. We'll, let's try and avoid black. So it's going to be a case of going in your palette, depending on whether you're using pans or whether you've got tubes. Something like an indigo is great because you can add red to it and you can add brown to it and you can really beef it up. That's what I thought was there, but I don't think that is indigo now. I must have been a tiny... <laughs> that's Prussian blue. See, that's Prussian blue, and I thought it was indigo. Let me just find my indigo because I need to add some more. Obviously, if you've if you've only got black, then that's fine. But add a, maybe add a bit of blue, a bit of red in it, just to um, just to give it a bit more depth. Oh, there he is. So let's get some indigo. You can see why I thought it was indigo. So I'm thinking, the mine, can you see that? Let me see if you can see that swatch. Can you see that? Sorry, I keep jogging. Right, so I'm going to go for um, indigo and some of that red in my palette there, which is probably a Windsor red. And what we're going to do, when we put these stripes down, we need to look at where the light's hitting certain parts of his muscles and his body. So we're going to go slightly lighter and then we're going to go ri much richer. So we're going to go much richer with our stripe under the bottom and then sort of fade it up and then go richer still in those areas. So you've got to really look at your picture and look at where the, the difference of tone is in the stripe. Um, so if we start on this side with the point of your brush, keep stick with your big brush if you can. Let's just put that first sort of rich stripe in there. Let's 
and then bringing another stripe down No, I think I'm going to do this one now because it starts getting fiddly. So what I mean by the tonal, so if you put that first bit of stripe in, then take all the paint and food brush and then just pull it out so it's really watery. And then go back in. With the darker shade. Oh, that's not quite the same colour, is it? Yeah, that's where it is. So you get this area. So you've got the dark, the light, where the where the light's hitting it, and then you come back down to the rich. Darker area. Do the same with the one next to it. Again, taking all the paint off, just using water then just to get that gradient in between those two darker areas. So then what you'll end, with, end up with is hopefully like a, if you keep leaving little gaps and filling it in with just the gradient, you'll end up with a slightly lighter part over the top of his eye. concentrating too much I'm not very good with patterns I have to really really think what I'm doing sorry I hope you're all okay you're still there When you start to come around this area, you'll realise there's another light area here. So we'll have that lighter swathe of, cut of, of light coming through our stripes and then a lot darker as it goes underneath, as it bends around.
and this one the same you've got oh, actually no that's the grass isn't it so i think there was grass in the front of this in the front of this photograph and obviously where the focus has been pulled on the giraffe you, uh, giraffe <laughs> i've turned it into giraffe now um in the zebra i think that's what those little green patches are so just ignore those And it's definitely a lot darker in there because that's where the muscle's coming around. And you can drop, if, you, if you've if you got little areas where it's it's gone too pale and you know they should be darker, you can just drop the paint in and allow it to bleed. And try and get your stripes to really curve around the body and that will help it look even more 3D as it curves. So while I'm working down this area, I'm going to join in some of these stripes into the muzzle now. I'm just bringing down a wash off the end of those. Keeping that light, slightly lighter area around that front there for a bit. That focus better. I have problems with my Wi-Fi today. I'm sorry about that. I'm going. It's um. It's just trying to just relax and enjoy it, and just as you're painting these stripes in, just trying to uh. Not hold your breath like sometimes I do. <laughs> just go with the flow and just sort of let your brush meander. sort of around its head and feel almost feel that muscle that you're painting around and think about where that darkness needs to be 
where it dips underneath. And then this is really the darkest area here, so I'm going to start down there on that. Oh, let's make sure I'm painting the stripe, not the white bit. Whoops, I think I've done... Ah, that's on my brain. It's not engaging. Right, never mind. <laughs> Darker at the bottom, sweeping up. And there's another dark area here. And taking all the paint off my brush again and then just blending that around Now what I'm going to do with the edge, I'm just going to leave the edge, just allow the edge to fade off. Just do some subtle washy stripes down on that right hand side there. A few more to do. Hoping you'll find it nice and nice and um, therapeutic and not too stressful.
gonna pop in this slightly darker wash of that purple onto the muzzle on mine. Depends what yours looks like, but just to join it in with those stripes there. Okay, let's have a go at this gorgeous hair, this mane. So I'm gonna do mine the same color as the stripes really, I think to keep the painting all with the same continuity. So I've got a nice purpley, this dark purpley blue. And I'm gonna go really dense in this bottom area where it joins the head. Just get those, that first wash in and then where you get to those white edges where the white comes up just just sit, sort of flick your paintbrush around those areas where it's where the white is you have to work because it's because your stripes are wet you have to sort of work above your painting above your paper if you can And then allow your wash to just soften slightly. And then it's up to you. You can either use the end of your paintbrush or you can use the fan brush like we've used before. And then you could just, while the paint's still wet, you can just flick out and get some really lovely, irregular, furry edges. If you haven't got a fan brush, or just got an old brush that's splayed out, you could do it that way. Just so that we don't get that kind of block of color. It's up to you how much of a Mohican you give him, how much of a mane. I'm just going to drop in a few purpley brown tones as well, just in and around, just so it's not just a solid one colour hairdo. So I'm just putting, I'm putting down little pools of paint really and then allowing the fan brush to just catch it and flick it out so you get the light shining through. And I'm going to do the same down the bottom really just so it looks like those, that's the white fur flicking up. added a bit more brown in there just so there's a bit of variety. Here comes the dog. Just a little bit of a two second warning. She's peering out the window, everyone. I didn't really think um, think this through, but we've got a scarecrow competition in the village and the scarecrow is all starting to go up. We do it every year and the scarecrow is all starting to go up this week. And um, I placed ours <laughs> just behind the hedge, which is just the area that Evie likes to watch out for anyone passing by. So of course, a lot of people stopping and looking at our scarecrow, which means you get increased um, Evie um, reactions in the house at the moment. I didn't really think that through. I probably should have put it on the other side of the road. But hey. All for a good cause. It's 
speaking of good causes, £500 you guys have raised um, in donations for these tutorials for the NHS, for Salisbury Stars Appeal, which is our local hospital. Um, I'm blown away. You're amazing. Trying to speed up a bit now because I just realised what the time is. Let's just get some of these black stripes in. It's such a gorgeous photo. It's worth taking your time and really, really doing a lovely job with this one if you can. Well, that's what I've told myself anyway. <laughs> Trying to get his hair that mane as irregular as I can, really, so it doesn't look like it's had too much of a <laughs> a lockdown fringe trim. Anyone else been brave enough to cut their own hair? Oh, it's a very stressful business when you don't know how to cut hair. I've cut my husband's hair, and um, I was fine with the clippers actually, but it, I didn't quite know what to do with the top, so <laughs> just sort of hacked at it. Well, I'm told I did an okay job, so that's all right. Okay, how are we doing? So let's get some um, let's get some light and shade on that ear then, it's a bit of detail. So I'm going to put a bit of a shadow colour again, a bit of that purple on that side of the ear and then get some on that inside. And we'll have a bit of pink in there as well, I think. Some, a few little browny, purpley marks in, just over the top of his ear, and just to show that furry edge there. People outside the window, here comes the dog. Two second bark warning. Hmm. <laughs> 
There's people looking at the scarecrows. <laughs> okay, then under his eye, we've got some little brown patches there as well. Let's get those in. put a bit more brown down just a subtle wash over that muzzle then stand back and have a look at your painting and see where you can see any areas that that need a bit more mo modeling to make it look 3d have you gone dark enough under here and if you haven't add in a bit more of a wash do you feel like you've gone darker in all the right places to, to really let that area flow round that cheek? And if not, just drag, drag another little wash over the top. I'm going to get a bit more darkness in my eye now because now it's dried I can I can see it's dried back a lot paler than I want it to be so I'm just going to go in with a smaller brush and just add a bit more definition Just going to start tidying up a few little areas with that small brush. Can pop in a few whiskers. No one coming out here. A few little lashes. I'm just drawing in a, just a few subtle little marks that will just give them a bit more expression. Still want to keep him quite loose, but just it's just a few little areas that will just pull him into focus a bit more. So just exaggerate that nostril a bit more. Going back up to that ear. Let's just get a few little dark little strokes in there just to show the inside.
by darkening these areas here, you can try and get it to look like it's bending up. And then what I'm going to do, I've, if you've got some clean water, I'm going to have to use some more <laughs> drinking water now because I've run out. Let's have a quick gulp. I'm just going to lay a few more washes down over the top really, really gently of a nice bright cerulean blue. I'm just going to try just exaggerating a few of those blue marks that we put in before just to give it a bit more sunshine and just catch where those those little areas are so round that jawline under here across that shadow just down that front edge and where else did I see down here by the muzzle so just filling in a few of those little white areas and just dragging it next to your stripes muzzle needs to be a lot darker actually I'm just going to do another little wash over that there oh my goodness we've been a whole hour that's a whole hour of painting guys are you all still there wow thirty five of you still there well done <laughs> So then what we're going to do, when you're happy, when you're ready, it's up to you how many more little areas of colour you put in. I'm just, I'm just seeing a few more areas that I think will look nicer with a bit of pink around there. you just got to be careful now because it will make your stripes bleed a little bit. warming mine up a little bit more and then let's pop some color in all around him shall we so I'm not going to give mine a background it's up to you you can give yours a background if you like just be careful if your paint's still wet and it doesn't you don't want it to bleed out too much I'm just going to pop in a few of those pink tones in and around, oh, all over my keyboard. That wasn't part of the plan, actually. And then that really fresh, bright, bright blue. So just flicking the end of your paintbrush. And then I think when it's dry, I'm going to add some um, little white highlights on his eye and I'm going to give him some luscious eyelashes. I think he deserves, but I'm going to wait till that's dry now. So have a, just stand back, have a look at what you've done. See if there's any areas that you might want to add some detail, maybe when it's dry. If you decide you want to add a bit more colour, you can go even more rainbow if you like. I think I better stop mine anyway. Um, 
I really have no idea whether you're all still there. Let me just see if I can turn you back around because um, my connection was so bad I had to turn it off on the on the cam well, on the computer. Oh, oh yeah. Hi, I'm back. How did you get on? I hope you um I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry, I'm just sitting right in front of the um. What's it called? A tripod. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry, the connection issues. I should have some more data topped up by um by Friday, hopefully. Um, well, I really enjoyed that. I know it was it was probably a bit different because it was a bit slower. Um, trying to have a bit more control because of those stripes, and we didn't really want it to go too wacky. But we still got the hopefully you've still got the loose watercolor feel. And the main thing is hopefully you've all enjoyed it and had some fun. So if you get a chance to um, photograph your zebras and upload them to me that would be amazing I, I can't wait to see another lovely I'm assuming it's a herd of zebras I like to do the collective um, word for them so we had an array I google that one an array of hedgehogs which was stunning some really lovely backgrounds um, I'm looking forward to uh, I'm assuming it's a herd um, I discovered the other day that you call a group of camels this was down to our family group quiz um, a group of cam camels is called a caravan who knew? Um, maybe we should have a go at a camel at some point. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, if you're a bit behind, that's fine. Take your time, enjoy it, um, catch up, play it again. And I'll try and get this one uploaded to YouTube by this evening, if not by tomorrow morning. And I'll see you same time on Friday for something else. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Wait and see. Um, have a great week. Keep smiling. And I'll see you then. Bye.